What's good guys so in this video we are gonna be comparing two of my favorite no app builders and that is flutterflow in app guyver and we're gonna be looking at six specific categories to see which one of these app builders is gonna come out on top and we're gonna be comparing the following things ui logic backend database components plugins and community and at the end of the video, I'm going to be telling you my personal thoughts about which one of these app builders I prefer for each uses. Now, before we get started, if you like no code, if you're interested in building software without writing a single line of code, make sure you smash a like on this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment with any of your thoughts, questions or concerns. Having said that, let's begin. Now, the first thing I want to compare is the UI. And so here I am in Flutterflow. I have an app open and I'm also here in AppGyver. I also have an app open that I built. And so right off the bat, the UI is very, very similar. OK, so for instance, here in Flutterflow, we have different tabs that take us to different parts of the app. We have the UI builder here. We have the widget tree. We have all of these kind of back end things, database, settings, uh, assets, stuff like that. On the right hand side, we have the properties, okay? And uh, in the middle, we have the, the UI. We have kind of the app that we're building. When it comes to AppGyver, we also have these kind of widgets here on the left hand side. We have the main app that we're building. And on the right hand side, we have the properties. Now, one thing I like about Flutterflow is that it's more streamlined. So, for instance, if I pick a widget here, let's say I pick this uh, text widget, this input query widget. I have my properties here on the right hand side. And as you can see, we have not only properties, we have properties, we have actions, we have the database for that uh, specific widgets. Maybe it's getting data from uh, a backend somewhere. And we also have animations. Once we go back to AppGyver, it's not that streamlined. We have properties, we have style, and we have layout. So basically, all three things are very, very similar. Whereas in Flutterflow, it's pretty much all one thing, okay? It, it, it comes under this properties uh, tab here. And so in AppGyver, in order to kind of get the logic, to, to set the logic for a specific component here, we have to go to this part here. And this is where you set the logic uh, component tab or, you know, something else happens. I can click on it. And now we have properties for this logic here. And I can, you know, pick the kind of logic. The other thing about Flutterflow is that we can also configure the backend for it, right? We can configure the query type and all that. And to do that in AppGyver, it's a little bit different, okay? Because you have to pick the element that you're working with. So for instance, let's say you have this title here uh, and you have to go in here, content, and then you have to pick, okay, are we binding to a static value, data variables, formula. So it, it involves a little bit more work, okay? So I would say Flutterflow is a little bit more streamlined. I like the fact that I can go to my actions here and define an action right off this thing. I don't need to go to this bottom panel and design kind of the action. But I also have an action flow editor, right? I can open it up and I can, I can do that as well. So for instance, here, I need to go in here and, and this is where I define my logic, okay? And so when it comes to kind of the UI layouts, while they're very, very similar, I think I'm going to give this edge to Flutterflow because it's, it's a little bit more streamlined. Now, the next one I want to talk about is the logic, right? The logic is really the core of kind of, of your app, of everything that you do. If you do not have any logic, then what you really have is a web page, okay? You don't really have an app. And so the way it works in Flutterflow is that you click on an element. Let's say I have this input query and I go on the right hand side and I have this uh, action flow editor. OK, and it's extremely powerful because I can, you know, here I have my actions, but I can also, you know, I can pick an action. For instance, I have Algolia search. I can do a database query, API call, authentication. I can also have a custom action, which is something that I code on my own. So I can come in here, I can pick a custom action here, and then I can, you know, create a new custom action. I can come in here and I can start building it right here. So this is very, very powerful. And pretty much here, you can kind of do everything that you need to do. So for instance, if, you know, something happens, if I want to get data, if I want to act on events, 
I can do that very, very easily. So if I delete this uh, custom action here and I add a regular action, we have navigate to navigate back. We have a delay. We have all of these things. So it's very, uh, very, very powerful. And it's kind of, it's very, very streamlined. Whereas for AppGyver, what you got to do is you got to pick the element. And instead of coming here, you need to go down, right? So this is kind of on this lower, lower panel here. And you open it up, and here you have the event. And what's nice about uh, when it comes to AppGyver is that if you pick this event here, you can go here and you have different things that are happening. So you can do data changed, property change, property visible change, fired from trigger events. So, so you have a couple of events kind of to work with. And then you can simply go in here, and then you can go to your logic, you can drag this, and you can connect it. Okay, so you have navigation here. And the way you do it in Flutterflow is you come in here, you pick it directly, right? So you have on submit, you have this event here, and then you say navigate to, you know, homepage, for instance. You can set a duration as well. So it's very, very similar, but it's more streamlined on Flutterflow, right? I can also open an event, uh, uh, an action editor, and I can just add more action. I can add a conditional. Uh, I, I can do all that. And I can do very, very similar things here in AppGyver. And one thing I like about AppGyver is that I have that whole CRUD, right? That create, read, update, delete uh, methodology here. So I can grab a record. I can create a record. I can update. I can replace. I can delete. So this is really, really handy right here, right? So I can, you know, I can navigate. I can delete, navigate. And I can say, well, I want to create a new record. So we're going to go in here. Maybe this is an input. Maybe I have an input here. And I can create a new record, and I can just specify all the fields here. So it works slightly different, but you can pretty much achieve what you want to achieve in either one of these tools. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the database, the backend. Where are we going to be loading the data from? Where are we going to be storing data from? So when it comes to Flutterflow, you have a bunch of different options. The first of these is Firebase. So Google Firebase and more specifically Firestore, right? This is a great database because you can, it's very scalable, it's very flexible, it's very, very easy to set up. And so you simply go to, uh, you create an account on Google's Firebase uh, console and you connect it here. And then you also set up your schema here. So here I have a simple schema for like a blog article, uh, a set of blog articles or so something like title, contents, publish, and then I can access this data inside the app. Another thing that's nice about uh, Flutterflow is that you can also use Algolia, right? So you can also integrate it with Algolia, which is kind of a search engine, right? You can, you can take that data that you have in Firestore, that Firebase data, and you can index it, and this makes it awesome. I also have an uh, Algolia setup here, that I set up for uh, one of the apps is that we took our documents, we put it into Algolia, it's replicating there. And as a result, I have all the keys set up and I can actually do queries on Algolia, meaning I can easily create a search engine. And I actually build an app. It's one of the previous videos. You can find it on the channel. Beside that, you also have your API configuration so you can add your API call and create a connection to any kind of a third-party API service. You can get data, you can modify data, and that pretty much opens up a lot of possibilities. Now, when it comes to AppGyver, if you go to your data tab right here, you have your data resource. So you have your APIs here. You have this uh, REST API integration, which is kind of what we are using for this app. And if you go into connectors, you also have your Google Firebase connector. So it's very, very similar. It does not have Algolia built in. It also doesn't have kind of an internal database, but nevertheless, it's still very, very similar to what you get with Flutterflow. But I would argue Flutterflow is a little bit more flexible when it comes to that. The next thing I wanna talk about is components, okay? And components are essentially a bunch of widgets that are together and they perform a certain function. So for instance, if I go in here, I am picking like a random widgets and these are our primitive elements, right? Text, container, row, column, etc. If I go in here, I have so-called templates and these are essentially a collection of widgets that perform a certain function. So for instance, let's say I need a 
sign in with Google button. Well, I can go out and build this widget on my own, or I can use a component or a template. Uh, I have a, a lot of templates here. And so I have a paywall component. I have a checkout, uh, you know, a checkout summary, a checkout page component. I have kind of a find your dream space component. Very, very easy to do. And the other thing that's also easy is that I can pick a certain something that I built. Maybe I, I built a bunch of widgets and it would make sense for them to be together all the time. So I can transform that into a component. So all I have to do, come in here and I can create a custom component from this widget. So if I do that, I'm, I can create a custom component. So I can just call it component one here. I can say add a component. And then once I go here, I'm going to see this component here. So I can use templates and I can also create custom components if I wish. Now, when it comes to AppGyver, we have something very, very similar. So for instance, we can go here and pick a simple widget. So something like an icon, a title or text, or we can go to a component market here and pick a composite component. Basically, we can pick a component that is a combination of a bunch of widgets, just like in Flutterflow as well. And if we want, we can actually create our own component. And in order to do that, all I have to do is drag and drop this container here and put something inside that container. So for instance, we have a container, I can put a button in there. And now from that, I can come here, I can pick this container and I can convert it to a new component. So that's basically the same thing as in Flutterflow, I'm gonna create kind of a composite component or a complex component that contains a bunch of other widgets. And I can reuse that inside my app as well as other apps that I'm building. And it's gonna be very, very easy to kind of configure it, send a bunch of data in there, display various data. It's gonna make things very, very uh, easy and simple. And so from that respect, AppGyver works very, very similarly to how Flutterflow works. It's, it's a very, very similar process. Now, when it comes to creating truly custom components and really extending your app by essentially creating widgets that are not here, so something truly unique, truly interesting, you can easily do that in Flutterflow by going to the custom functions tab and going to the custom widgets area here. And here you can create a brand new widget and you can actually code it here. So for instance, I can call this custom widget and I can view boilerplate code here, and this is my code, and I can actually code a custom widget with code. And this is pretty much the pinnacle of customization because maybe I wanna create like a progress bar that doesn't exist, or I want it to behave a certain way. And with a little bit of code, with very, very simple code, and I actually have a video on my channel where I talk about how exactly to do that, I can easily create a truly custom component that does pretty much anything that I want. And this is simply not possible with AppGyver at the moment. Another thing that's really nice about Flutterflow is that I can go to pub.dev here and I can find a, a lot of different packages here. So for instance, let's say I want like a progress bar. I can just search for progress. So for instance, we have here an audio video progress bar. It's a progress bar widget to show or change the position of an audio or video stream. So I can click on it here and this is kind of what it looks like, right? This is kind of what it looks like. And when I'm playing like a video or an audio, this thing is gonna move and I can also kind of control it and move to a specific location, to a specific position in kind of the media that I'm working with. So if I'm playing a video or an audio file, this is gonna be very, very familiar, right? So as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's in seconds now and I can actually move it. I can do all that. So if I wanted to, I can easily go to this example here and I can copy this example right here to my uh, custom widget. I can copy it here. I can modify it a little bit and I can easily create a brand new widget from scratch, a very, very interesting widget that may not exist in the repository. And so you can take it as far as you want. The extensibility is, is pretty much limitless because this repository has a ton of things and you can uh, use uh, things that are already here or with a little bit of coding knowledge you can create a brand new component that you know makes your app extremely unique and, and awesome and that is simply not possible with AppGyver it does not have this kind of uh, repository 
it does not have this kind of coding aspect. AppGyver is purely a visual builder. And so the advantage of that is that it's a lot easier to get started. You don't have to worry about customization. You don't have to worry about coding. But I really, really like this uh, aspect of Flutterflow because it's really easy. And trust me, I was, I was somebody who just came and I had no idea how to do it. And it took me like a couple of hours to, to get started. And now I can easily create uh, amazing widgets and make my app really, really unique. So I really, really like that aspect or Flutterflow, but having said that, it's not a necessity. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the community. So Flutterflow was launched in 2021. Okay, this is Flutterflow 1.0 launch, May 19, 2021. AppGyver has been around since 2010. So AppGyver, just like Bubble.io, have been around for a relatively long time. So as a result, more people are familiar with the product, more people understand the product, more people are, there's a bigger community when it comes to AppGyver, there are more people kind of building around that product. Now, when it comes to Flutterflow, it's relatively newer, and there's a lot more buzz around Flutterflow, kind of with the people that I'm talking to, there's a lot more people that are interested in using Flutterflow, in building with Flutterflow, as opposed to AppGyver. And so while AppGyver has been around for a longer period of time, from my experience, from my understanding, Flutterflow has a bigger buzz around it because it essentially takes what Flutter is, it, it takes the Dart programming language, it has a big repository of different plugins, of different things that you can use. And so there's a lot of interesting ways of kind of making your app work. But if you're interested in stability, you're interested in something that is proven to work, that has been around for a relatively longer amount of time than AppGyver is the tool you want to look into. Now that we've compared AppGyver with Flutterflow across a bunch of different categories, let me give you my point of view and let me share with you my own opinion. Now, I personally like AppGyver a lot. AppGyver is one of the more elegant tools that kind of forces you to create your app in a very, very elegant way. And I really, really like their methodology. And so if you're looking to build a mobile app, you're looking to build a prototype, you're looking to build something, AppGyver is going to be more than you need. It's going to be perfect for your needs, regardless if you're trying to build a simple app or a more advanced app. On the other hand, if you're looking to learn a harder tool, a newer tool, a tool that hasn't been around that long, a tool that a lot of people are super excited about. And really, in my opinion, one of the more interesting no-code tools because you can build using this UI, you can also code a little bit, you can also use a Dart package. So you have a lot, a lot of options at your disposal and you can pretty much build any kind of app that you want. It's not gonna be a cookie cutter app. It's going to be a customized app and you can customize it as far as you want. Definitely look into Flutterflow. While for the past several years, I had a lot of fun looking into AppGyver, building a bunch of apps, exploring their functionality. I must admit that I've been having a lot of fun working with Flutterflow, using their various functionality, their custom functions, looking at their different components, even writing a little bit of code in order to customize my app even further. And so if you're looking to learn a newer tool, if you're not worried about getting your hands dirty, if you want to work with a tool that can potentially allow you to customize any kind of app that you want where your possibilities are pretty much endless, and you're also interested in maybe learning a little bit of code, if that means, you know, having a nicer app, a more effective app, a more interesting app, then Flutterflow is exactly what you're looking for. Ultimately, the choice is going to be completely up to you depending on what exactly you're looking to build and what exactly connects with you better. My job is simply to inform you, to share with you my own opinion, but at the end of the day, the choice is going to be up to you as to what kind of tool do you want to invest your time, your energy, and build the kind of apps that you want to build. And so this is it for me. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below which tool you like more, which tool you are looking to learn more about it, 
which tool you are looking to invest your time and energy in and also let me know if you have any questions or concerns don't forget to smash a like on this video subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet already and i will talk to you in the next video